the those the relationships with, with the outside, uh, especially in Capulín, were like visits to the outside would be more or less supervised, right? Mm, adult mm-hmm. and so on, rather than let's say young people going out on their own, yeah, on a Sunday or something like mm-hmm. that. And you can, uh, mm-hmm. somewhere I have a slide of a from a, a southern campo, the um, a, a tractor being used to haul this huge like trailer mm-hmm. but this uh, that took people in mm-hmm. and out. yeah while in capulin that same uh, tractor mm-hmm. uh would not have for example tires no oh, absolutely because mm-hmm. if it didn't have tires then it's an instrument of work mm-hmm. because i would ask this question i thought mm-hmm. it was a piece of junk it, oh yeah. no no that is sorry <laughs> yeah <laughs> i did not and the uh, the front tires were used on the buggies. Mm-hmm. Nothing was wasted because those are solid rubber tires. It's yeah. not like you're going you know, exactly. to feel the bumps here. <laughs> and he was explaining. And yeah. I went into their homes. I was, of course, uh, being able to judge the, the, the lack of, uh, let's say, pectorials in the mm-hmm. house. And, mm-hmm. But I did notice I had a refrigerator. Yeah. So I asked, well, if there's no electricity in the colony and so on, it was more like a... I, my question was, how do you get the refrigerator to run? Yeah. But his response was conditioned. It is not my fault that it runs on gas. <laughs> 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 so we were doing an end run uh-huh. <laughs> on the, uh, on the system here. Yeah. Cause exactly. I never even knew there was such a thing as a gas powered refrigerator. Yeah, exactly. Never in my entire life had I heard of that. Uh, <laughs> And just mm-hmm. assume, well, the, the first thought that came to mind was that mm-hmm. maybe the, it was an old refrigerator and, and then somebody puts ice blocks the old fashioned oh, way. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's, it's actually the, the ice uh-huh. chest type of thing. But yeah. no, this thing actually ran. Yeah. So I think that was the, the other area where there was a, a point of conflict with the Mexican, uh, Population had to do most. The governor of Chihuahua publicly declared that there could be no t- two types of Mexicans when it came to military service. Mm, mm-hmm. yeah. Even you know, and the history with that that is mm-hmm. <laughs> that is a huge, huge problem, mm-hmm. and uh, which would have cost people to take off. And they claim mm-hmm. that some people actually felt sufficiently threatened, given their history in Canada and Russia, mm-hmm. that they would want to. And go someplace mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. At least in this case, to another part of Mexico, mm-hmm. like Zacatecas or mm-hmm. Tamaulipas, where you had small colonies. Yeah. But they um, were generated a, a conflict among uh, Mennonites was that they were trying to negotiate with the government to have a sort of like a non combatant role, which is mm-hmm. what, let's say, happened in Russia, what mm-hmm. could become woodsmen or a variety of other things. Mm-hmm. Kind of uh, an alternative service type. Basically, yeah. yeah. What mm-hmm. we had here in the U.S. is you can join the Peace Corps, for example, if that mm-hmm. was the case. Uh, but then the question of uh, just being on a list mm-hmm. was not going to be acceptable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But see, then the more traditional Mennonites, the community leaders show up to your to the army headquarters are in mm-hmm. charge of drafting mm, mm-hmm. and basically tell them the military they look like us they're okay if they don't draft mm. them <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so that the mennonites now who are more addressing modern and so on and if you drive a car and so on yeah the other mennonites were throwing them under the bus <laughs> right yeah exactly exactly <laughs> I, I thought i thought it was amusing it was funny but it was very oh. very controversial and very real for them. Yeah.